In this video, I'm going to show you how regular expressions work in Python. The video is based on Pankaj Parashar's article entitled Regular Expressions in Python, which is available at the URL shown here. The first thing we need to do is import RE, which is the regular expressions module. Pankaj provides a lot of great examples, which I'll show you. But before I show you those, I want to show you two functions of the RE module and two simple functions I've written to help understand our examples. First, the search function. The search function requires two parameters, the regular expressions pattern and the string to search for that pattern. It also has an optional third parameter, flags, which we will discuss later. The pattern argument is passed as a string, which is generally prefixed with R to make it a raw string. This is because both Python and the regular expression syntax use backslashes for escaping. And if we pass in a regular string, we would have to double backslash everything we want to escape. Here's a very simple search call. It checks to see if this string contains this pattern. If the match is found, it returns a match object. Otherwise, it returns none. The find all function works similarly but it returns a list of matches. For example, this call would return this list containing both matches. If no match is found, find all will return an empty list. Okay, so armed with that knowledge, let's take a look at the two simple functions I've written and then at our examples. Here are the two functions I've written to help us understand the regular expression examples I'm going to show you. For each example, we're going to store the result of a call to search or find all in a match variable. When we use search, we'll pass the result to check. Remember, search returns a match object when a match is found and none when a match isn't found. When converted to a Boolean, a match object will convert to true and none will convert to false. So if there is a match, we'll print I, which is the example number we're on, followed by a colon, followed by result.group. Result.group simply returns the string that matched the regular expression. When no match is found, we print I colon no match. When we use find all, we'll pass the match, which will be a list of strings that match the regular expression, to check list. If that list has at least one element, it will convert to true when converted to a Boolean. And we'll print I colon and then the list joined into a comma delimited string. If no matches were found, the list won't contain any elements, and an empty list, when converted to a boolean, converts to false. So we'll print i colon no match. And now we're ready to look at our examples. The first example, we're matching an ordinary characters like i i i, that's three letter i's. Match gets re dot search, and then the raw string are three i's, and we check the string p i i i g to see if it contains that pattern. And of course it does, so when we pass it to our check function, the match is in our result variable now, and if that match object is true, if that converts to true, which it will, we print i colon result.group, and result.group just returns the pattern. So it will print 1 colon i i i. And then we add 1 to i, so the next time we call this, it will output 2 colon, and then either the pattern or no match. So let's look at the next time. Match a single character using dot. Match gets re.search, the raw string i.i. .i. So that dot is a special character and it evaluates to any character except a new line character. So if we're looking in the string p-i-r-i-g, we'll find that. We get i and then any character and then i. So r is the any character. And again, that will return true and check match will output I, R, I. The third example, match any single letter, digit, or underscore using backslash lowercase w. So match gets re.search, raw string, I, backslash w, I, and this is where that backslash comes in as an escape character. So the w is a special character, and again, it matches any single letter, digit, or underscore. It basically matches any word character, anything that's not a special symbol except the underscore. It does match the underscore as well. So we look in P-I-A-I-G for that and we check match and that's going 
to output IAI. The A is matching the backslash W. So when we pass that to check match, it'll just print IAI. Here's the fourth one, match any non-word character using backslash uppercase W. So this is the opposite of backslash lowercase W and it'll match special characters for the most part. So match equals re.search, raw string, i backslash uppercase w, i, we look in pi, at symbol ig, and it's going to find that i, at symbol i. And so check match will just output i, at symbol i. Number five, match a single white space character using backslash lowercase s. So when we look at i backslash s i, and we're looking in pi space ig, we find that i space i. So check match, outputs i space i. Number six, match any non-white space character using backslash uppercase s. That's the opposite of backslash lowercase s. So that's any non-white space character. So when we look at the pattern i backslash uppercase s i, and we look in the string pi capital A i g, we find this i capital A i. That matches the pattern. And so when we check match, it'll output I capital A I. The next one, number seven, match tab character using backslash T. That's the same as in Python, a backslash T in a regular expression is a tab character. So when we look at I backslash T I, it matches the I backslash T I found in this string here and check match will output I tab I. Number eight, match decimal digit using backslash D. So I backslash D I, that pattern is found in P I nine I G where the nine matches the backslash D. So check match, we'll output I nine I. Number nine, the pattern we're looking at is caret P I I. The caret says that the string has to start with that pattern. So we look at this string P I I G P I I, that's a match. The P I I in the beginning of the string is a match. If we change this to A, and then run it, you can see number nine says nine colon no match. We remove that A, run it again, and now nine says PII, so it matches. So that caret again says the string must start with this pattern. Okay, the dollar sign is the corresponding N, so match end of the string. So when we look at PII dollar sign, and we look in this string, we find the pattern at the end. This string does match that pattern because the string ends with PII. So check match, well, I'll put PII. Number 11, match literal character backslash dot. So this is actually matching literal character dot. And we use backslash dot to escape it because dot has special meaning in regular expressions. A dot is any character other than a backslash n. So if we want to match an actual period, an actual dot, we need to put a backslash in front of it. So when we match this pattern, we're looking for this pattern, backslash dot IIG, and we're looking in this string, PII dot IIG, we find the pattern right at the end. There's the period followed by IIG. So when we check match, it will output period IIG. Number 12, match any character in A comma B or C or in A, B or C. Here we're gonna use square brackets. So the pattern looks like this, P, open square bracket, A, B, C, close square bracket, G. This A, B, C within square brackets, it's looking for one character that is in this set. So when we look in P, B, G, we find a B character, and that is in the set. So when we check match, it will output P, B, G. Number 13, match any decimal digit between zero and nine. This is the same, we're using square brackets again, except this time we're using a range. So we say P, or the pattern is P, 0-9 within square brackets, G. So the character after P is any digit between 0 and 9. P, 7G qualifies, so when we check match, it will output P, 7G. Okay, numbers 14, 15, and 16 demonstrate that when you include a dot or a period, Within square brackets, you don't have to escape it. It's always a literal dot. So the pattern here is P followed by a character between A and Z, lowercase a and Z, or a dot, and then the letter G. 
So PIG qualifies because I is a letter in the range lowercase a to z. And so that first one, number 14, will output pig. Number 15 is looking at the same pattern, but we're looking in the string P7G. If that period were a special character, meaning any character, this would qualify. But this shows that when the period is within square brackets, it is no longer a special character. It's looking for a literal period. And so P7G doesn't qualify. So this will output no match. And the third one, number 16, again, using the same pattern, we look for P period G. And that does match because we're looking at the literal character period. So this will output P period G. Okay, number 17 and 18. When we use a caret within a set or within square brackets at the beginning, it negates that set. So when we look at P, open square bracket, caret, lowercase a to z, close square bracket, g, that second character, the character between the P and G, has to be anything but a through z lowercase. So P7G matches because 7 is not in the a dash z set. So when we check match, it will output P7G. In the example below that, number 18, we'll look at the same pattern for PIG. I is in the A dash Z set. And since it's negated, we're looking for something other than A through Z. And so PIG will not match. And this will output 18 colon no match. Number 19, match one or more characters using the plus symbol. So the pattern is PI plus G. What that means is that the I can be repeated. So when we look in this P I I I I G and check match, it's going to find those four I's as a match and it will output P I I I I G. Number 20 is match zero or more characters using asterisk or star. And this is the same as the plus except it also matches if the I is not there. So when we look at the pattern P I asterisk G, the string P G with no I will actually match. And so this check match will output PG. Number 21, match zero or one character using the question mark. So this will not match multiple I's, this PI question mark G. It'll either match PG or PIG. So when we look at this string, it finds this PIG and it outputs that. Now, if we were to use find all in this case, it would find this PIG and it would also find PG here. Let's change that real quick. Find all. And instead of check, we'll use checklist. And when we run this, you can see 21 matches pig comma PG. So both of those are matches. When we run it without find all, the original way, 21 just matches pig. It just finds the first match. We'll show that again in 22 and 23, search versus find all. So we're looking at a string, purple, space, Alice at google.com, comma, blah, monkey, space, bob at abc.com, space, blah, space, dishwasher. That's our string. So our pattern here is the pattern for an email. The first set there in square brackets is backslash lowercase w, which is any word character essentially. Um, so any letter, any number, and an underscore, or a literal dot or dash, repeated. So one or more of those, that's what the plus sign means again, followed by an at symbol, followed by one or more word characters, followed by a literal dot, followed by one or more word characters. And we're looking in our string for that pattern. When we call it check match, it will output the first match it finds. Alice at google.com. When we use find all, on the other hand, it will output a list. So same pattern, same string, but instead of just outputting Alice at google.com, it'll also go on to find Bob at abc.com and output that. So I'll run this. And you can see number 22 just outputs Alice at google.com. Below it, I've also printed the match object, and you can see that the match string is alice at google.com. 23 outputs alice at google.com, comma, bob at abc.com. And you can see below it, when we print match, it prints the list actually with the square brackets. So a list with two elements, our two matches. Okay, 24 and 25. 
This is non-greedy matching with find all. So the first one, number 24, it's looking for an open angle bracket or less than sign followed by any character repeated any number of times, zero or more times, followed by a greater than sign. This is greedy, which means that it'll find the longest possible string it can find, or the longest match it can find, which means it will find the whole string here. Basically, match contains a list with one element. In number 25, though, when we put that question mark after the asterisk, it says this should be non-greedy. So in this case, it's looking for short matches. So it will find open angle bracket, strong close angle bracket. It will continue to look and then find the close strong tag, open angle bracket, forward slash strong, close angle bracket. And it will also find the open M and close M tags. And it will return all four of them. Okay, number 26, compile. The compile function does exactly what you would think it would do. It compiles the pattern so that it will run faster. So when we call the compile function and pass in a pattern and assign that to a variable, in this case pat, we can then use find all or search on that variable, on pat, instead of on re. And we just pass in the string. So pat contains essentially the pattern already. And when we call find all and pass in foobar, it looks in foobar for the pattern foo at the beginning of the string. And it finds it, so when we call checklist match, it will find foo. So again, you use compile for a pattern that you're going to use over and over again because it won't have to recompile the pattern every time. And finally, number 27 is the third parameter of search and find all, the flags. And these are three of the most common flags, ignore case, dot all, and multi-line. The flags are passed in as the third argument of search and find all, and the second argument of compile. So in this case, we're using them with the compile function, and we're passing in all three, ignore case, dot all, and multi-line. Ignore case does exactly what you think it would do. It tells it to ignore the case. So it'll match FOO here at the beginning of a string, lowercase or uppercase. Dot all changes the meaning of the special dot character from matching any character excluding the backslash n to matching any character including the backslash n. So when you pass in this flag dot all, a dot will match any character. And the multi-line flag will change the way the caret and dollar sign work to check the beginning and end of a line instead of the beginning and the end of a complete string. So when we call find all on our pattern here and pass in capital F O O backslash N lowercase f, capital O-O, backslash n. This will find the first foo, backslash n. Even though there's an, a mixture of uppercase and lowercase letters in foo, it will still be found. And the backslash n is part of that string that will be found. That's matching the dot. And then it will also find this next foo, backslash n. So both of these will be found. And you'll get a list of two strings, foo, backslash n, and foo, backslash n, with the foos with mixed case. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks to Pankaj for letting us use his post as a basis for this video. Check out some of his other great posts at the URL shown here.